Hi everybody. Today we're going to look at how we work with text in Python. So specifically, we're going to be looking at the data type string. Now we're going to start off nice and easy with a very basic program. We're going to have a function called print and it's going to print out the words max is awesome. Now, I'm Max and I'm awesome, and so that's what we're going to try and print out. So in order to print, we're going to run this program. And as you see down here, the terminal, um, yeah, it's done what we wanted it to do. Uh, we've passed in the text into our function print, and it's gone ahead and printed out the text we wanted it to print. Now, let's try and do this a little bit differently uh, and introduce a slightly new concept, which is the concept of a variable. We're going to write a variable and let's call the variable something like message. How do you write message? There we go. <laughs> okay. And we're going to pass in uh, the text that we had a, a moment ago. Max is awesome. And we're going to write the variable that we have declared over here and assigned a value to over here into our print function. So now if we run this program, there's not going to be a big surprise because it does exactly the same thing that it did before, right? It prints out the text, Max is awesome except for that we've done it a slightly different way. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, I want you to note one thing, which is that instead of using double quotes, we could also have used single quotes. You'll see if I run this, you will have exactly the same outcome. So it doesn't matter if you use double quotes or single quotes over here. But now let's look at a, a, a slightly special case. Let's say we're trying to write something along the lines of Max's text, right? So it's an apostrophe S that we're trying to get in here. And you'll see that if I try to run this, we're gonna have a syntax error. Now, in order to get around um, this problem, we can revert to what we've been using a moment ago, which is the double quotes. And you'll see that if we run this, um, we'll get the desired results, which is the max with an apostrophe S and the text, All right? So you should note that whenever you're using an apostrophe um, to adjust the, um, quotes which you're using, right? And so not all the text that we write in, um, in Python needs to be short. So let's say you have a long text, right? Let's say you have some arbitrary long sentence like, hello, this is a very long string. And let's say you have this text a couple of times just to make it a little bit longer. And you can run this program again. And of course, it's gonna print out exactly what we wanted it to. But say you want to print the line in a, in a way that um, economizes on space by um, using a new line for each and every sentence. So in order to do that, you have to use the uh, quotation marks and you have to insert three, both at the beginning as well as um, at the end. So we're gonna insert it at the end over here, right? And now what you can do is you can start the next sentence and uh, the next line and go ahead and do that again over here. And if we run it, um, you'll see we'll have what we wanted every single sentence uh, is in a separate line. Now, of course, if you don't believe me, 
we'll re remove the double quotes, go back to the single quotes, and now you'll see that, um, yeah, it's gonna give us a bit of an error. So if you're gonna write your text in um, multiple lines, uh, like I did here, don't forget to use um, the triple quotation marks at the beginning and the end. Okay, so now let's have a look at how we can count the number of characters in the sentence that we write. So let's go back to a very easy example um, with a shorter text. Let's write hello. And uh, in order to find out how many characters are in our text, we can use a function called len, which is short for length. We'll just go ahead and insert that before our variable. So now we pass in this variable into this function length, uh, which gives out the, the length of the text. And then it goes ahead and prints out the length of the text. So you will see, once I run this, yep, it prints out five, which is of course the number of characters in hello. You'll see that if I write hello, again and print it out again, we'll have 11 characters. We have the five in the first hello, the five in the second, and the space in between. So now what would happen if we want to access the individual characters within our sentence? So let's say we want to access the first character of our sentence. We can do this by writing the variable name again and then afterward we're going to use square brackets and write in a number one. Now you'll be surprised to see that even though we're asking for the first character um, of our text message which is of course the H we get the E instead. Now this is because the first um, character has the index zero, as with most other things, in um, as with most other programming languages, in fact, you'll find that the index is usually normalized to zero. And you'll see here that if we give it a, the right index, we do indeed get the right character, which is H. So if there is an easy way to print individual characters of a string of characters, then there must also be a method to print out sections of a string. Now, let's specify that. Let's assume you would only want to print the first hello um, out of the two hellos that we have up here. In order to do that, you can write um, message and give it a range which is 0 to 5 by using this colon over here. Now if we run this you will see you only get the first hello. So what it's done here is that it's only printed um, the characters in our string which have an index of zero to five. Now, on a side note, you don't necessarily need to have this leading zero over here. If you leave it out, you'll see, you still get the same result, but let's leave it in for now. So we've printed out the first hello. So we see that we can print out uh, individual characters and uh, sequences of characters from a string. Let's see what else we can do. We could also try to write everything uh, in our um, variable in uppercase. And for that, we can use the method upper, right? Go ahead and run that. You'll see that this method that we've appended to our variable message has um, printed out every single character of our string 
in capital letters. Now, you've probably already, get, already guessed it. You can also use the method lower to do exactly the opposite and it will write everything in lowercase. So you see up here that we have the capital H's and down here we'll have the uh, lowercase h's. So now let's say that we want to count the number of O's in our string above. There's a helpful method which allows us to do that, which is the method count. And we want to count the number of O's. So we write um, the argument O into our method. And we go ahead and run it. And we'll see that a number 2 pops up down here, which corresponds exactly to the number of O's in our string over here. Another helpful function uh, allows us to find where in the string a particular letter is located. Say we want to find the first um, O in our string. We can go ahead and write find and run it. And we'll see that the first O appears on the, first in, on the fourth index of our string. So if we count H0, we have one, two, three, and four, which is our first O. Now, when you're using strings, one other thing you may want to do is to add several variables together to make a sentence. So let's give that a try and um, write a second variable message two and give it the value max and we'll change the first one to hello and let's delete what we used previously now we're going to try and do something called concatenation so trying to add these two messages uh, that we have above together now the way we go about it is quite intuitive we simply write the first message. We add a plus sign, and then we go ahead and write the second message after the plus sign, and we run the program. And we'll see that we've concatenated, so we've added together these two messages. But as you will see, that this method of adding the two variables together isn't particularly desirable because it's not left a space between these two letters. So in order to add a space between those two letters, you need to add a space as a string. So you have the first message, you add to it the space uh, as a string, and then you add the second message. Go ahead and run that, and you'll have exactly the result you want it uh, as two separate words. Now sometimes when I'm using Python I find myself forgetting what attributes and what uh, methods are available to me. So before we go ahead and end this video I want to show you one final trick to uh, which helps you remind yourself of what's available to you when you're using a particular variable. And that's the function dir for directory. Now go ahead and write dir and then pass in the variable message and go ahead and run it and you'll see that down in uh, the terminal you get a long list of methods and attributes that are available to you. You will for example find the find method that we used earlier, or the count method, which we also used earlier. But as you see, there's uh, plenty more that you are able to use. So yeah, this is a um, helpful little uh, function that uh, you can use to remind yourself of what's available to you. All right, so we're going to leave it at that for the first tutorial. I hope uh, that you sort of enjoyed this format. 
Um, let me know down in the comments below on what um, I can improve. This is one of the first videos, so I'm hoping to make them better. Um, so let me know how you like the audio quality, how you like this format, um, and let me know if there's any particular topics you want to um, yeah, know about in the future. Um, if you enjoyed this video, then leave a like, and um, I hope to see you in the next one.